Hey, uh, Nico from VoiceFlow here. And in this video, we will uh, create a demo uh, with uh, uh, a sample, um, with a bit of code. Uh, so you can use uh, Yugin Face Inference API to do text to images. Uh, so the thing is, um, for example, here, uh, let's say I want to add the API step just to, uh, to show you and uh, give you more context here. The API step is waiting for uh, some text or uh, JSON uh, formatted answers. So that's how you can then map using a pass uh, to a specific key and map that to a variable. Uh, and that's fine. That's fine with uh, OpenAI uh, uh, API, because if you want, you can use OpenAI API to use DALI for, uh, to generate an image. And the response will be a URL to that image. So easy. You can then map that uh, key in the response to a variable and then use that variable in an image step. The thing with uh, some of uh, other API, like uh, Ugging Face, when you use a text to image, you will not get uh, a URL. Instead, you will just get data, the, basically the, the image data. So this is a blob, and you, you can't use that in your uh, image, uh, image step. So what you want to do instead is have an endpoint that will make that call for you and translate the response to something uh, VoiceFlow can understand. And this is what we're doing here. So uh, for this, uh, we will use one of the uh, available uh, text-to-image models. So again, face, if you click on models, you can filter the uh, text-to-image model that are available. Uh, for this to work, because we are going to use the uh, uh, Face uh, library, um, and this is using basically just a wrapper uh, around the existing uh, Face API. Uh, this is a wrapper for the uh, inference API. So to be sure, you want to, whenever you click on the model, you want to be sure that the uh, hosted uh, inference API is available. Um, because that's the only way you can use it uh, in our code or with the uh, the uh, again face inference API. So, regarding the code, what we what we got here, again, this is uh, this is pretty simple. Uh, we have less than uh, fifty line uh, fifty lines. So we are using Express uh, to um, to make uh, an endpoint available, uh, which will be a text to image. Uh, so basically, just a server. Um, and from this, we are waiting for uh, a payload. And in, in the body, we will need uh, a token, model, prompt, uh, and some parameters. So when I say we will need, it's not really true, because the only thing we need is the prompt. So what is mandatory here is the prompt. This is why we have this uh, validation. Uh, because token, you can uh, avoid using this. So uh, again, face allow you to use the inference API without any token. Um, but you might be limited in terms of uh, how many requests you can do and, and stuff like that. So if you have a pro account, you will be able to um, uh, use uh, your token here. Uh, the model, by default, we use this one, but you can pass any model you want, again, as soon as this one is uh, available uh, for the uh, uh, inference API, and some parameters. So this is um, more to tweak that a bit. Some, um, some models allow you to send more parameters. Uh, we will see that a bit later. Um, and then once we've got all we need, we are just basically making that um, inference call. So that we are using the text to image. The, uh, the library allow you to do uh, a bunch of uh, other functions, uh, completion, all those things. Uh, and by the way, uh, you can check the documentation right there. Uh, but here we are focusing on text to image. So this is what we are using right there. And for this, we need, again, the model, the input, that will be the prompt and parameters. So we are just basically just passing whatever we got from that body to this uh, to this uh, function. And from this, we will get a blob. So again, this is the thing we can't handle in our API step. So we want to uh, convert that um, into a buffer, and that buffer will be a, a base64 string. Uh, so again, blob, buffer, string, and then uh, we are returning uh, a URI, so basically the data, uh, so data, the type can be a PNG, JPEG, and that's something we are getting from uh, the, uh, the response, so from the blob. 
and uh, the base64 uh, base encoded uh, data. So this is basically just a string. And then we are returning this as a JSON with the, uh, the key buffer and the image will be uh, this uh, with all the data. So that's that's it. Uh, again, not not a big thing. Um, uh, because I'm running this locally, uh, I will uh, just uh, use ngrok for that. So I'm using the uh, the port uh, 3800. So I want to do an ngrok uh, HTTP 3800. Okay. Now I've got my forwarding URL and my uh, node app is available outside uh, for the outside world. Um, and that's that's all we need to test that in voice flow. So uh, we are going to use uh, this API step I've just created for uh, to give you more context on this. Uh, post that's my forwarding uh, ngrok uh, address, and my endpoint is right there, text to image. So this is where we want to send our uh, request. For the either, we will do a custom type uh, application JSON. And for the body, uh, for this one, this is a row body. And uh, and we just, uh, we're just going to send uh, a prompt. So I do have a prompt ready. And let's see how it goes. We will see the uh, variable mapping uh, right after that. So let's test that request. All right. Uh, went well, so we do have the buffer, we have the data. So what we need to do is basically just save all this into a variable and then use that variable into our uh, image step, if that makes sense. So for those who've seen the uh, Eleven Labs uh, video, this is pretty much the same thing, but for an image. Uh, so let's map that response to, uh, so response buffer and we will create a new variable, um, image. All right. So the buffer will be saved into the image variable. Let's add an image step. Combine those two steps. Uh, and we're not going to upload anything. Uh, we are just using um, our viable. So I'm selecting the link image and we're good to go. So let's give that another try. So again, hitting the API step and gen then generating the image. And as you can see, now we can have that image uh, render into our image step. Um, so regarding other parameters, uh, again, we can uh, we can use another model if you if we want to. So let's say model here will be and. Um, so by default, uh, we are again using this uh, Open Journey V4. I might have, uh, let's use this one. Uh, do not forget to add a comma here and we should be good. All right, let's try that. So it's just a matter of uh, swapping the, the, the model that will generate the image. And you can see the style is a bit different uh, while the prompt was the same. Because again, we are using, just using another model, and uh, and uh, yeah, as you can see, we do have a uh, bunch of uh, model available uh, to test on again face. So uh, yeah, uh, test that. Um, check the the available model. You can you can short that by training by uh, most like most download. Um, but yeah, the, the only thing you you need to check again is uh, if they do have a it's available for the inference API and the name, you can copy it from here. So that's that's what you want to use for, for the model. So that's, that's the first thing. Um, what if we want to go a bit further? Um, well, we can use, let's actually, let me show you this, uh, this prompt here. Um, so yeah. Uh, Again, just uh, if you have a pro account, it's just a matter of uh, adding your token right there. So yeah, that's, uh, uh, I think it's something like that. Uh, yeah, that, that will allow you to use your uh, token key uh, or yeah, your, your key and, uh, and avoid some, uh, some limitation here. But for this one, we are using the Open Journey V4. Um, 
with um, uh, a more uh, longer prompt. And, uh, and the parameters, as you can see here, we use a negative prompt uh, with blurry uh, as a value. So let's give this a try. Yep, working. Um, so now what we can think of is, um, of course, um, we can add a capture. Let's actually add a text and, uh, and a capture as well. So text will be uh, what well, image uh, or please give me a prompt. Um, you can generate some variant here, but just to uh, keep that uh, view below 15 minutes, maybe um, we'll do this uh, like this. So please give me a prompt. We are going to um, save that. Uh, basically capturing the entire user reply. So the prompt will be into the uh, last U-turns. And uh, the only thing that we need to change here is this. Then um, we can just get rid of everything and replace that with our variable, which is last U-turns. So the only thing is now, uh, instead of using a static prompt, we can use uh, whatever we want to type in there. Um, uh, a bottle of wine on a table. And this will generate, again, um, the corresponding image based on my prompt. So it's working. Uh, the last thing you might want to, to do, if you want to go a bit, a bit deeper, uh, it's by using an AI uh, set step to basically just uh, optimize that prompt because some user will not give you like a prompt that is well defined or um, like optimized to be used in um, in such models. So uh, let's add a set AI here. Uh, the prompt will be something like this. So using the user's prompt last utterance again, which we've just captured here, uh, generate the description that could be used for image generation models. Del um, Dali to my journey. My journey. Uh, only return the uh, updated description without adding a leading and ending quotes or anything else to your answer. And um, let's save that as our prompt. Uh, so let's create this variable. I uh, will not have any, uh, anything else in there, uh, not default settings, not even a, a system prompt in there. Um, and uh, let's add this right there. So prompt. And this time we need to change that with prompt. And uh, while we are while we are testing this, what we can do is add a text step just to debug what the generated prompt looks like. So we can do debug and let's add the prompt. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can now remove this, like the debug thing, but it's just to see that how our prompt has been tweaked by the LLM to make that a bit like more usable prompt for uh, image generation here. Nice house, a beautiful house sits atop snow covered mountain basking in the warm well. Yeah. Definitely a better uh, way of, uh, of saying that. So, Let's get rid of this one. We don't need this debug uh, part anymore. And the ultimate thing is, uh, well, we can, uh, we can actually let the user uh, choose if, uh, if they want to use the uh, prompt optimized uh, version or not. So uh, uh, button one will be uh, um, Isaac. And optimized. So if we want the optimized, that will be this. If we don't want it, we're not eating the uh, the uh, um, AI set step. The only thing we need here is uh, actually attach uh, or do an action, which is sets the variable. So we want prompt. 
to be last utterance because as we are not passing the uh, uh, into the uh, set AI in the set AI, we are mapping this to prompt, and here we are using prompt. So we want to be sure that either if we use basic or optimize prompt variable will be populated. So yeah, again, let's uh, give this a try. Basic, no prompt optimization, just sending uh, straight to the uh, to the uh, plugging uh, face uh, inference API, and uh, let's run that again. But this time we want the uh, optimized version. Here we go. So um, yeah, that's um, that's it for this video. Uh, the uh, sample code um, is available in the repo, uh, in our main repo. And, um, and yeah, uh, have fun. Um, do not hesitate to try different models. And uh, keep in mind that um, this can be uh, used and reused anytime you uh, are dealing with such a, a sort of a response from an API. So when, whenever it's not a JSON or a link to an image, a URL to an image, but just a bunch of data. You can always have like a um, like a sort of a, a proxy API to um, to make the call for you and, and generate whatever you want at the end. This is also a good way to uh, make multiple calls on your backend and just give VoiceFlow or your assistant in VoiceFlow uh, the uh, the response you want. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Do not hesitate to uh, um, ask questions about this uh, in our Discord. And uh, see you next time. Bye.